Hey, this is John Lee Dumas, the founder and host of Entrepreneurs on Fire. And if you're wanting to learn how to embrace change and navigate through disruption as a leader, then listen to the Leadership is Changing podcast with my good friend, Dennis Giannoutsis. He's prepared to ignite. Welcome to Leadership is Changing. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change. This is taking your leadership to another level by finding the balance between executive excellence and personal well-being through stories that inspire real change. It's time to adapt in our fast-moving world when leadership is changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsas. Hey, welcome to the show, Leadership is Changing. What we as leaders know to be true is that change is constant. Leaders everywhere confront similar obstacles because people are people, but everywhere you go, leaders are overwhelmed, disrupted, and under pressure. They run from email to email, meeting to meeting. Many leaders are not changing quick enough, which means they run the risk of becoming irrelevant and being left behind. The purpose of the show is taking our listeners' leadership to another level by finding their balance between executive excellence and personal well-being through stories that inspire real change. I believe we don't have enough effective leaders in the world today, and if we can get the leaders to step up and lead change, then they can inspire real change. It is time now to adapt in a fast-moving world. So listeners, Hey, welcome to Ask Dennis episode, which is a freestyle episode. I'm asked a question by our listeners, and I share my thoughts, insights, and experiences from working with many leaders across the globe. So welcome to today's session. Today, I have a question that's come through from two or three people, but in particular, it's come through from Maria. And she's asked a question, which is, how do I as a leader stay relevant? So how do I as a leader stay relevant? And it's a very good question, Maria, because it sort of has different meanings of being or staying irrelevant. You know, we have people who are in their career, which is towards the end part of their career, could be 10 years from retirement. It could be whereby they're more or less starting their career, but uh, or they're changing jobs or there's all sorts of things aren't going on for them. But how do they stay relevant especially in today's market where things are moving so fast. Because you see, with the things moving so fast, change is happening and it's getting quicker and quicker. Technology is changing. And so for a lot of people, they start to think, wow, how can I stay or keep up with what's going on with technology and the other things that are happening for them? So there's a few things, listeners, that I want to go through today to share with you about my thoughts on what you can do to stay relevant as a leader moving forward in today's market. Number one would be attitude. And I'm also going to call that mindset. So what is your attitude? If you think you're being left behind or if you think that you're not able to do things or you're not good enough to do things, then you're right. Whatever you think, whatever your mindset is, whatever your attitude is, then you're right. And so I know that for a lot of people, they might be thinking about things. And if that's the way they're thinking, well, then that's what they're going to attract. So I'm going to say to you is think about your attitude. What is your attitude? What are you thinking about? What are you how are you looking at things? For a lot of us, there are things that are happening in our lives that are out of our control. But there are two things, as I've said in other episodes, that are in your control. Number one is your attitude. In other words, how you react to things are going to be really important. Number two, it's where you're going next. And so let's talk about the attitude side of things. See, attitude is a six inch gap. The six inches between your ears. What's going on for you in your thinking is really, really important. How positive you are is key to helping your thinking, to helping you uh, along things. So if your thoughts, in a certain way, what that's going to do is going to create the emotions. And based on the emotions will depend on what actions you take producing 
result. So if we need to change things, we need to change our thinking. So one thing here, as I said, team, is your attitude, it's your mindset, how you're thinking, are you positive, where where are you with things in relation to your attitude. Number two would be around being curious. Now, that's an interesting word. If you've got some curiosity around certain topics, that would be massive in helping you stay relevant. Because I always find that those who are curious about things are the ones that are going to go and do the research, go and search it, go and understand it more. And if you can ask quality questions around that topic and helping you be curious, and you sit and you listen, or you read and you learn, then it's really interesting what you will find out. Now, the quality of questions is really important. You see, I believe that The quality of your life, the quality of your leadership, the quality of your business, everything comes down to the quality of the questions that you ask. And if you take time to step back, think about the right questions that you might want to ask, and then go ahead and do that, and then listen to what's been said, read what's been put out there or been written, then you are going to learn a lot. So curiosity is huge. And if you've got that attitude of being curious about things, you're already out there looking for it. You're out there looking to research it and learn more about the topic. So being curious is really quite important. Part of that curiosity is going into step number three for me, and that is around industry and business trends. So how do you stay ahead of the curve? What can you do to make sure that you understand what what is happening in the industry or in your business side of things and how do you stay ahead of the curve. So there's a few things I think you can do. One thing you could do in this area is understand the economic side of things and geography side of things and what's happening that allow you to stay in the cutting edge. And so what you can do is go and learn about the economy side of things, what is happening, economic side, Go to sources that can give you that kind of information and make sure they're sources that are credible, sources that are going to give you the ability to understand the economic side of things. From a geographic side of things, what's happening for you in your neighborhood, in your city, in your country, within your region, and within the world. If you can do that, that's going to help you stay in the cutting edge and staying in front of that curve, as I said before. The other thing I would say is number four, is find out what's important to people. Because you see, it's not all about us as leaders. It's about the teams that we lead. It's about the communities that we lead. If you can go out and find out what people want and then help them get that, help them be successful, in turn, that's going to help you be successful. If you go out and find out what people really want, In other words, what's the thing that lights their fire? What's the thing that's their passion? And if you're curious about that, then that's going to put you in a good stead with those people, but also understand more from where people are coming from and their perspective. Because you see, people think differently. What you think and what I think could be two totally different things. The idea that you have, the ideas that I have, could be two totally different things. The number of times I've seen leaders go into a meeting and share their idea, but don't take time to listen to their team is amazing. Because what happens is that they are closed to the other ideas. Many minds will have more ideas than just the one person. And so a smart leader will actually understand and find out what's important for people, get them to think differently, but also help you think differently by asking them some really cool questions. Number five would be around networking. And what do I mean by that? A lot of leaders aren't very good at networking. They're very good at networking within their business unit uh, or within their team, but their business unit, they may not be very good at networking. They're very good in work networking with other business units, or do they just stay in their silos? The other one is how good are they building the network or understanding who people are within their whole organization? Now, the thing here is if you can 
work outside of your bubble in relation to networking, that's going to be really helpful in helping you stay relevant. Why? Because you can ask people those questions, as I said before, be curious and understand what people, what's important for people, but also what people's thinking are today and where they see things going. Another one would be understanding uh, when you want to go networking, work out or understand the industries that you're already interested in. Then research and look and see what networking events are coming up in relation to that industry. Is there an association kind of meeting or is there an industry type meeting? Is there a certain company holding a meeting? Find out when those meetings are. In fact, team, here's an action item for you. Understand what kind of networking events you want to go for, go to for the next six months. And I'd like you to sort of brainstorm around that. Then I'd like you to research and think about, well, what kind of events are coming up in relation to those events or that industry and so forth. Then get into your calendar and book those events in your calendar. The next thing I'd like you to do is that as you're approaching to go to those events, step back now and think and set your intent for that meeting. Now, are you going along to have the nice cup of coffee, glass of wine, sausage roll, some hors d'oeuvres, or are you going there to actually, with some other intent, of actually meeting two or three key people? Notice how I said, not to say 20 people, just two or three key people. What's your intent when you are actually starting to plan and think about these different networking events? You see, the people that you hang around with are the people that you start to become. And we've heard those kind of sayings before. You become those who you hang around with. Now, make sure you are working or involved with the right networks. Make sure these networks are ones that are going to help stretch you. So, if you go to a network and you're the smartest in the group, find a new group. And what do I mean by that? Well, you want to be stretched, you want to be challenged, and you want to learn. But if you're the smartest one in the room, you're not going to learn. Yeah, you can learn from others and others can share with you, but you want to be challenged. You want to be stretched. So go to one whereby it's a different level. There's different people in the room that are going to take you to a new level. And if you can do that around the networking space, that's going to be really good. Number six, never, ever get complacent. A lot of people are very complacent in their jobs and things are fine and I'm okay, I'm gonna, I've got a secure job. Well, there is no jobs today that are secure. Look at COVID-19, look at the pandemic. Something came along, boom. A lot of organizations have had to go into lockdown. Countries have gone, had to go into lockdown. What does that mean? A lot of businesses are shut down for four weeks, six weeks. No income coming in, but they still have expenses like rent, office space, things like that. Staff, employees, payroll, they had to pay that still. And it's quite difficult. Now, some governments are given some relief, some subsidies, some help in helping some of the organizations through that period of time. But there are also some governments that haven't. If so, for a lot of organizations, they will struggle. So there are no jobs that are secure nowadays. So don't get complacent. Make sure that you're learning as much as you can to move forward. Complacency will come and actually smack you from behind and give you that fright, but also will blindside you, if I can put it that way, whereby you won't even know it's come. And so be very smart in what you do and actually trying to stay relevant in today's market. The next thing I'd like you to think about is is your five-year vision. So step seven is your five-year vision. What I suggest you do is you go to a local bookstore and buy yourself um, a sketchbook. Now, sketchbook has got a whole lot of blank pages in there, and that's where people can take pen, chalk, uh, charcoal, and things like that and do some sketching. I think it's a great size if you can get an A3 or an A4, um, quite large sizes, to be able to do it. And just write, mind mapping, drawing, writing, whatever it is for you to brainstorm and start thinking about your five-year vision. Now, what do, we, what do you need to do? Number one is where you are sitting today or standing today, that reflects or represents today, now. Across the room, another chair, another lamp, pot plant, right across the other side of the room, 
That represents you in five years' time from now. What are you doing in five years' time? What role are you doing? What money are you earning? Who are the people around you? Who are you hanging around with? What kind of things are you doing in five years' time? I'd like you to start brainstorming about that. Where you are today, but where you're going to be in five years' time. And you see, that sketchbook is like a blank canvas. And you can start drawing and working through things to help you understand where you want to go and what you want to do. And so between where you are and where you want to be in five years' time, there's going to be some stepping stones to help you get there. Those stepping stones could be your next role, business, or whatever it is for you that you're going to go from one, two, three, or how many stepping stones to get to where you want to get to in five years' time. So if you can step back and start thinking about that, your five-year vision, that's going to help you stay positive, excited, energized, and relevant as a leader going forward. Because you have a vision of where you want to go, and you're going to work hard to get there. Is it going to be easy? Nope. But is it going to be worth it? Sure is. But it comes down to the amount of work and focus and discipline that you put in place to go on that five-year vision. Number eight is continue to grow yourself. Now, what can you do that uh, in relation to growing yourself? Well, you can go to different events and you can go to different workshops and you can, whether it be online or face-to-face, depending on what's going on in life at the moment. Like in a pandemic, a lot of it is actually happening virtually. But there's a whole lot of events, workshops and training that you can go to. Another area that you can work on is books. What books are you reading to help you stay aligned or ahead of the curve and staying relevant? Now, for a lot of you, you might say, I don't actually have time to read the book. Okay, cool. So you might be traveling, driving somewhere, on a train, on a boat, on a a bus. What about listening to an audio book? So that's something else that you could do, right? So think about those two things. Podcasts, like this one you're listening to today. There are podcasts that you can listen to that will help you understand what you might need to do and learn from different people. White papers, articles, there are different sites that will have those available for you on different topics that you might be searching for. Another one is, going back to the book side of things and not having enough time to read, where a non-fiction book, you don't need to read from cover to cover. You can go to different chapters, different areas that you might want to learn. But there are also other tools out there called executive book summaries. Now, executive book summaries, they'll take a 250-page, 300-page book and summarize it in eight pages and give you the nuggets. That's right. They'll give you a book summarized into eight pages and give you the nuggets. Now, imagine if you read two or three of those executive book summaries, uh, pretty quickly you could read that with eight pages. Three times that, that's 24 pages. And so that will help you be in a better position as a leader and help you stay relevant in today's market. So that was grow yourself. Go out there and see what you can do. Now, team, I think the thing here is taking time out to think and engaging with people to help you do that, that's great. But the last point I want to share with you is this. That's all great, thinking, brainstorming, being curious, looking at all those different things, networking. But it all comes down to one thing, and that thing is action. You need to take action. You can read as much as you like. You can study as much as you like. You can network as much as you like. But what you need to do is take action with what you are learning. And if you take action, you're out there on the cutting edge. That's how you're going to stay relevant as a leader. But if you go, oh, well, it is what it is. Um, ah, oh, well, life's just like that. I'm really busy. Ah, oh, well, you know, we're going through a pandemic. What can I do? I'll just let it blow over. No. People need leaders, and they need leaders now. People need leaders to stand up, and they need you to be there as a strong, solid base so people can latch on to you, and you can lead them forward through the change. And if you can do that, you can embrace change and lead change going forward That's how you're going to stay as a relevant leader. All those other things that I talked about are really, really important. But it all come up to one thing. By taking action, 
leading the change, embracing it, moving forward, then you are going to be the leader that's going to stay relevant in today's market. Make sure that you are staying relevant. The other thing I would say here is that what you do today and where you are today or what's got you here so far is not going to take you over the next five years. You are going to have to continue to grow. You are going to have to continue to be curious and move through things as you do. So team, for you to move fast as change is happening, because technology and all sorts of things are happening so fast, your attitude, your mindset, how you're thinking, curiosity, industry and business trends, understanding what's going on out there in the marketplace, find out what's important to people, help them become successful, networking, get out of your bubbles, get out of your, that the small bubble that you're in and get into other industries, other topics, other groups, other meetings, and what are your intent for those different events? Hang around people that you want to hang around because other people that you'll become. Never get complacent. Always make sure you're pushing yourself and growing. Understand what your five-year vision is. Brainstorm. Understand where you are now and where you want to go. Grow yourself. Books. Get out there and read. Listen to things. Podcasts and so forth. Always think on things and engage with people. Finally, action. Take massive action and get out there. Because a curious mindset will help set you up for success. Curious mindset, lead the change, embrace the change. That will all set you up for success and help you stay relevant as a leader today. So thank you for joining me on the Ask Dennis session today. What we as leaders know to be true is that change is constant. Change is incredibly scary, especially with the unknown and unfamiliar territory. It's time to adapt in our fast-moving world when leadership is changing. So listeners, listen out or watch out for these episodes as they are being released. Download them, have a listen, put a review, put a rating, share them with your network, with your family, your friends. If there's any feedback you'd like to give me, or if there's a question you'd like me to ask our guests as we're going through the episodes, or there's a question you want to ask me for the Ask Dennis episode, feel free to send out an email to me, dennis at leadingchangepartners.com. Hey team, great to have you on the session today. Thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to this episode of Leadership is Changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsas. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change, inspiring executives and leaders to adapt and lead a bigger game in a fast-moving world. 